Welcome to this video about Gaussian naive days. Note that I here assume that you are familiar with the function of the Gaussian distribution. If not, watch my video about the normal distribution first. Naive Bayes is one of the simplest and fastest classification methods. A Gaussian naive Bayes model is based on continuous variables that are assumed to have a Gaussian distribution. The method is called naive because it assumes that the variables or features are independent, which is rarely the case. For example, if we like to predict a certain disease based on the body weight and blood pressure, the method assumes that these two variables are independent, which means that the person's blood pressure does not depend on its weight. However, Gaussian naive Bayes can still be used if the data is not normally distributed or if the variables or features are dependent, but the method will then not perform as well as if the assumptions are met. Suppose that we have the following data. Note that this is just fictive data where the values have been selected for the purpose of this video. In this study, one has measured the prostatic specific antigen concentration from a blood sample. In seven patients with prostate cancer and seven healthy controls, if you plot the PSA concentration of the 14 individuals, we see that the healthy individuals have relatively low PSA levels compared to the patients with prostate cancer. Suppose that we like to predict if a person with a PSA level of 2.6 has prostate cancer or not based on the information we have of the two groups. In this case, it seems reasonable to predict that the person has prostate cancer because the person has a relatively high PSA level. Naive Bayes can be used to calculate a more accurate prediction. To compute Gaussian naive Bayes, we first need to calculate the sample mean and standard deviation of each group. We see that the mean PSA concentration of the healthy controls is 1.5 and that the standard deviation is about 0 0.61. For illustrative purposes, we can then place a Gaussian curve on top of the data points of the healthy controls by using the function for the normal distribution. We plug in the sample mean here and the standard deviation for sigma. Then we calculate the height of the Gaussian curve for a range of different PSA values that correspond to a reasonable range of the PSA levels of the healthy individuals. We can then place the Gaussian curve here. Note that the curve has its center at 1.5 because the sample mean of the healthy group is 1.5. For example, the height of the curve when the PSA concentration is equal to 2 can be obtained if you set x to 2 in this function. And do the math. This value corresponds to the height of the curve when the PSA value is equal to 2. Next, we calculate the sample mean and standard deviation of the PSA levels of the cancer group and place the corresponding Gaussian curve here, which has a mean of 2.8 and a standard deviation of about 0.82. Note that, since the PSA values in the cancer group have a larger spread, the Gaussian curve is wider and has a lower peak compared to the healthy control group. We can now make use of these two curves to predict if someone with a PSA level of 2.6 has prostate cancer or not, since the height of the curve for the healthy individuals at 2.6 is lower compared to the height of the curve for the cancer group. We we'll predict that the person with a PSA level of 2.6 has prostate cancer. We can see that the two curves have about the same height when the PSA value is around 2.17. This value can therefore be seen as a cutoff value. If a person has a PSA level lower than 2.17, we predict that the person is healthy. Whereas if the person has a PSA value greater than 2.17, we predict that the person has prostate cancer. If we would use naive base classifier to predict the class of the training data, given the PSA values, we would make 11 correct predictions and 3 incorrect predictions. We can also use a test data set 
to estimate the performance of the classifier in a similar way. The height of the curve for the cancer group we previously calculated for a PSA value of 2.6 is usually expressed like this in naive Bayes, where the probability density of a PSA level of 2.6, given that the class is cancer, is equal to about 0.47. Note that, since this is a continuous variable, this value does not represent a probability, because a probability based on a continuous function is the area between two values. Just think of this value as the height of the curve. We can now summarize our calculations so far like this. In addition to the information that we have, we also know that in our sample of 14 individuals that were tested, 50% had prostate cancer. To determine prostate cancer, a biopsy was taken from the 14 individuals. Our prior knowledge is therefore that 50% of the ones that take a PSA test actually have prostate cancer, and that 50% are healthy. This prior probability can be set by the user to reflect the proportion that we would expect to see based on chance only. The so-called posterior probabilities can be calculated like this. But since the denominators are identical in these two equations, they are usually ignored. Naive Bayes therefore simply classifies the sample based on the value in the numerators. In this case, we would classify the person as having prostate cancer because the posterior numerator is higher for the class cancer than for the class healthy. Now, suppose that we have a second continuous variable in our data set which represents the age of each person. We'll now see how we can include a second variable in our predictions. We then simply calculate the mean and standard deviation of the age of the cancer group and for the healthy group. We can now predict if someone has prostate cancer or not based on both the PSA level and the age. For example, let's predict the class based on the PSA level of 2.6 and an age of 70. These are the same numbers that we calculated earlier. To compute the height of the Gaussian curve for the healthy group based on the variable age, we plug in the standard deviation of the age of the healthy group in the function, and the mean, and the age of the person that we like to predict. Since the value of the cancer group is larger than that for the healthy group, we again predict that the person has prostate cancer. This was the end of this video about Gaussian E-based classifier. Thanks for watching.